Okay, well, today I'm finally getting back over here to work on the Raptor. I'm going to remove the front shocks and rebuild them. I rebuilt the rear a couple months ago and it really helped a lot with the clunking and the, uh, the ride quality. The front's got a little bit of a clunk to it too. So I've got the kit in, get, this, get it jacked up, jack stands underneath it, the tires off, get the shocks off, and go rebuild them in the, in the shop. I'm going to speed this part up because I assume most of you know how to check up your truck and take the wheels off. But this just sets the stage so you understand how I did this basically in my driveway with just a bunch of hand tools and nothing special. Shouldn't have to be said, but when you jack this up and, and put the stands underneath it, make sure they're very solid because you're going to be pulling and pushing and beating on these uh, suspension parts and shaking the truck around quite a bit. So just make sure you have a good solid um, jack stand and jack stand location under the truck. Now I did break the lug nuts loose before I jacked the truck up, so all I'm doing here is taking my electric impact wrench and getting all the lug nuts off of the, the truck to get the tire off. It makes it simpler. Just something I learned a long time ago from an old mechanic is when you take the wheels and tires off, roll them back underneath the, the vehicle, under the frame so if something was to go catastrophically wrong and it falls it's going to land on the tires and not you you do want to make sure you mark the top of the shock mount for orientation okay well after a quick run to AutoZone now the sun's out and it's hot as it blazes out here so I'm going to be sweating a lot 30 millimeter socket kind of have to have one I didn't thought I did but I did um, so anyway, Another $22 in the cost. Now I used a 15 millimeter uh, deep socket on a swivel ratchet and it worked really well uh, to get these top shock nuts off. I took the, the back two off and just loosened the front one because when you go to drop the shock you don't want it to come loose up there. Uh, you want it to catch on something so break them all loose, take the two back ones off, leave the front one connected. So since this is my first time doing it, I was kind of learning as I went. And right about here, I realized that if I had opened the hood and maybe got a stepladder, I could have gotten to these with a, a long extension and a, and a socket. It would have worked actually pretty easy, but I already had them off. Uh, the passenger side is not quite as good as the driver's side for access. Now this is where you're going to need that 30 millimeter socket and, an, and a, about a two foot cheater pipe of some type. I just use the jack handle. It works pretty good on a about a two foot ratchet that I had, a breakover bar, whatever you've got. But this thing is really tight. As you can see, it takes a lot of work having to have an open end wrench on one end and the and the, the long ratchet on the other. I probably could have used my little impact uh, driver, but I wasn't sure. So I just worked this all the way off. And one of the things I noticed when I got it off is that there's a lot of blue Loctite on that nut. That's why it's so hard to get off even after you've broken it loose. It just drags. Now that I've got everything loose, I'm going to loosen up the uh, top ball joint on the top of A-arm and the spindle so that I can the weight will pull everything down a little bit. And you, it makes it easier to get the shock out. Once you've got the nut off, all you have to do is hit it with a 
hit the the end of the ball joint with about a two pound sledge a couple times and it'll pop out of that uh, that taper fit it'll just pop right up works really well so here what I'm doing is I'm pulling the bottom shock mount bolt using the impact wrench and just pushing on with a, a, a pin on the other side to drive that it'll just run it right out like a bolt no nut on the back side so just push it out and it comes out so now everything is basically loose and here I'm just checking to make sure that the none of the the brake lines and the the four-wheel drive vacuum lines and all that aren't under any kind of a, a stress or tension so I'm trying to make sure that spindle stays twisted back around so not to be pulling on those lines. And since everything is loose, the bottom uh, shock bolt is out, the upper ball joint is loose, the tie rod is loose, just takes a little persuasion here, just use a crowbar and get it up in here on this A-frame and pry down and that upper nut will hold the top of the shock and the, the lower A-frame will pull away from it. It does take a little bit of persuasion though, so get you a long, like I said, crowbar, you'll be fine. And one word of warning is that these shock spring assemblies are very heavy, so be prepared to take on that load when you get it out of there. And now all I'm doing is just making sure the marks that I made while it was in the truck are still there. They haven't been worn off with me up there working. And I'm making sure I mark the spring and the top plate. And the there's a ring at the top. I just want to make sure all of that stays lined up when I go back in with it. So I've always found it's easier to work on something when it's clean. So here I'm just taking my pressure washer, hosing off the 140,000 miles of grime. The, the shocks are not in bad shape at all. They don't really need to be re, replated or anything. They're just full of dust and grime and road tar. Get them all cleaned off. Makes it a lot easier on disassembly. And you do want to make sure that you don't pressure wash off your marks. Um, like I said, the, the shock and the, the top mount and, and all of that actually is indexed into the left and right front and how it works. We'll look at that a little bit more when we disassemble them and, and rebuild them. I have to make sure the left shock's left and right shock's right. I guess you could get away without doing it, but I wanted to save myself some trouble and make sure it all goes back together easy, and it did in an effort to keep these videos shorter than 30-40 minutes long I'm breaking this up into multiple runs. So that wraps up this removal video. The next one we'll actually have them on the shelf and we'll be breaking them apart and then we'll put them back together in the next in the third video. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any comments below on what I'm doing or how I did it if I did something wrong. I appreciate the feedback. Thanks for watching.